Hey everyone, welcome to your third C++ Qt uh, game tutorial. Let's go ahead and see where we left off in the previous tutorial. So this is the code from tutorial 2, and we just ended up with a rectangle that the user can move by pressing the arrow keys. So as I press these, um, the arrow keys, you can see the rectangle moving around. Now the goal of this tutorial is to um, uh, have the rectangle be able to shoot other rectangles when the user presses the uh, space key. So we're gonna do um, uh, we're gonna follow a similar approach as the previous one, but I wanted to create my own class called Bullet, and that's gonna represent the bullet um, that the rectangle will shoot uh, when the space key is pressed. So let's go ahead and create a, create a Bullet class, add new header file. I'm gonna call it Bullet, and add new source file. I'm gonna call it Bullet. Okay, so let's go in our um, header file. So I want the um, bullet class to derive from QGraphics rect item because I also want the bullet to just be a rectangle, but I'll just make it a smaller, um, a thinner and a longer rectangle than the uh, main rectangle that we have, which can move around using the arrow keys. So um, class bullet derives from QGraphic rect item. It's QGraphics rect item, and we have to include it. QGraphics rect item. Okay. And um, we're going to have to do some custom stuff in the constructor, so let's declare a constructor. And uh, we also want... Um, actually, I'll talk about that later. Okay, so... In the constructor, let's add a definition for the constructor. No, oh, it's not called my, it's bullet that age. Okay, so in the constructor of the bullet, um, now remember that all Q graphics rect items start with a rectangle that is zero long and zero wide. Now this bullet derives from Q graphics rect, so it will also start with a rectangle that is zero long and zero wide. We don't want that, so let's set a size. Now we will use the familiar set rect member function, and um, don't worry about the coordinates. It'll just um, these are just the x and y positions of the rectangle. We'll explain this in a later tutorial. But the width and the height, we want it to be only 10 pixels wide and about 50 pixels tall. Um, that's how big I want my bullet to be. So, okay, so we created the bullet size. Um, and the next thing that we want to do is actually add that bullet to the scene, but we don't want to do it here. Um, so there we go, we created the bullet size. Okay, so now let's go in the myrect.cpp and inside its key press event. So this is all the stuff that happens when the key is pressed. We check what key it is. If it's left, we move the rectangle left. If it's right, we move the rectangle right, etc. But we also want to see if it's space, because if the space key was pressed, I want the bullet to spawn right on top of the um, big rectangle that we have. So let's check if space was pressed. So we're going to add a new else if clause. So else if event key um, is equal to qt key space. So if space was pressed, we want to create a bullet. So, okay, so we have to include the bullet library or header file. And then let's create a bullet pointer. Okay, and remember that our constructor sets the size of the bullet so we don't have to set it here. Um, once we have created the bullet, um, we actually have to add the bullet to the scene. Um, so if I run it right now, when I press space, the bullet will be created. And I can prove this by using the QDebug library. So include QDebug. And then after we create a bullet, we're just going to say bullet created. Now, let's go so everything looks okay. Let's run this. And... Uh, Okay, um, unresolved external symbol. If you remember, usually you get this error when you add a new file and you don't do clean all and run QMake. That usually fixes it. 
and there you go, it does. So now let's press space. You see, as I press space, I get the message bullet created. So space is being detected, and the bullet is being created. But you didn't see any bullet. And the reason for that is because we do create a bullet object, but we don't add it to the scene. Remember, if you don't add an item to the scene, um, it cannot be visualized. So let's add this to the scene. Um, now, every uh, Q graphics rect or every Q graphics item uh, has a pointer to the scene that it's in. And the code that we're defining um, inside right now is the myRect object, which is a Q graphics rect item. So it also has a pointer to the scene that it's in. We want to add the bullet to the same scene that this rect is in because the big rectangle is the thing that shoots the bullet. So let's get the scene, first of all. Um, uh, so we're just going to get it's, the member function is called scene. This will return a reference to the scene that this myRect is in. And then we're going to call the add item of that scene and add the bullet to it. And now let's see if the bullet is added. Yeah, there we go. The bullet was added. Okay. So now when we press space, the bullet gets added, but we want the bullet to move. Um, I'm going to use this thing called the queue timer to achieve that. So let's go into the um, bullets constructor or header file. And um, let's make, um, first, before I do that, I'm going to go over a concept called uh, signals and slots. Uh, a signal can basically be thought of exactly that. It's just a signal, and then a slot is like a reaction to that signal. So you can map a specific signal to a specific reaction. So every time that signal happens, this reaction happens. The example will make it much clearer. Um, but uh, basically, a slot is just a member function that's supposed to react to a specific signal. It's just a regular member function, except the only difference is that you have to... Um, uh, put it under public slots instead of just public. Okay, so move. So this a bullet has a member function, which is a slot, which means a, a slot just means that it's a member function that can be connected to a signal. That's all that means. So it has a slot called move. Okay, it doesn't do anything yet, but um, let's go and connect this slot to something. So let's go into the constructor. Okay, so first we drew the rect, and then we want to um, connect some stuff. Okay, so let's create a queue timer. Include it first. Queue timer. Queue timer pointer timer equal new queue timer. Okay, so a timer object, um, basically, it's you set a time, and then every time that time goes to zero, its signal will execute. So if you connect a slot to a timer, then that slot, aka that member function, will be called periodically. The example will make it a little bit clearer. So let's connect this timer. So we use a function called connect. Oh, and before I uh, do this, I have to make the bullet. Um, if you want to use signals and slots, any class that uses signal and slots has to derive from Q object. It's just a rule. So let's include Q object. And in addition to making it derive from Q rect item, we're going to make it um, derive from Q object. OK, and then one more step that you need to do in order to make an object handle signals and slots is add a macro um, called Q object right here. So add it right here on the very top of the class. Um, so there's two things that you need to do in order um, to allow a class to support signals and slots. One, you have to inherit it from Q object, and two, you have to add the Q object macro right over here. Okay, so now this bullet can handle signals and slots, and it has a slot called move. And then in its constructor, um, let's go in its constructor, we're going to connect. The connect function will allow us to connect a certain signal with a certain slot. So you call it like this, connect, and then the first argument is an object. 
whose signal you want to connect. Not the actual signal, but the object whose signal you want to connect. So we want to connect the timer's signal. Which signal? Well, you do, um, in all caps, the macro signal, and then in parentheses, you're going to put, um, it should give me auto completion here. I don't know why it's not doing it, but let's try that again. So timer, um, signal. Okay, it's just called timeout. I know that um, from memory, but for you guys, it should give you auto completion. And then for the object um, whose slot we want connected is this object, because this is the bullet's constructor after all. And the slot that we want to connect is called move. So now this line of code connects the timeout function of the timer, which will go off periodically, to the move slot of this bullet. So every this much time, this move function will be called. And if we implement the move function properly, we can have the bullet move periodically. Thus, it will behave like a bullet. OK, so the last step is to do timer dot start. Um, it's a pointer. Start. And we're going to give it um, 50 milliseconds. And this line basically sets the timer's time to 50 milliseconds. So every 50 milliseconds, its timeout um, member function or its timeout signal will be emitted. So that means every 50 milliseconds, the bullet will move. Every bullet gets its own Q timer, which means that every bullet moves independently. Okay, so we have the bullet. It has a timer. It can move, and um, everything seems okay. And then when we go into the MyRect, when the user presses the space key, a bullet is created. Oh, but we did not set the position of the bullet. So let's set the position. Bullet set position. Pos. Um, for the X, we just want to create. We want it to create uh, to be created at the X and the Y position of the big rectangle. So the rectangle's X and the rectangle's Y. Okay, so let's run this. <clears throat> Unresolved externals, we know how to solve this usually. Clean all, run. Okay, um, looks like we really have an unresolved external. Oh, move. I never actually defined the bullet's move member function. So let's um, refactor, let's add a definition. Okay, so we connected the move um, to the timer, but we don't define what happens when we move. So all I want to do is move the bullet up. Okay, so I want to do set pos, and I want its current x, and then I want its current y minus 10. Remember that minus is up because of the coordinate system. Because the positive, the 0, 0 is here, that's the origin. Positive x axis is this way, and negative x axis is down, I mean, sorry, uh, positive y. So positive x, positive y. If you want to go up, you've got to subtract from the y. Okay, um, everything looks good. Now let's run it. Okay, so let's see. So first of all, I can move around just like before using the arrow keys. Now let's press space and see what happens. There we go. It launches a bullet. Um, so we do launch bullets, but you see a weird thing. Um, this scroll bar keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the reason for that is because these bullets keep going on and on and on. And the default behavior of the scene is to get larger. Um, it will continuously get larger to accommodate whatever items are in it. So those bullets are forcing the scene to get larger and larger, and these scroll bars keep getting smaller and smaller. So a quick and dirty solution to that is to just disable the scroll bars, and I'll show you how to do that right now. It's not the most elegant solution, but for this basic tutorial, it should do just fine. Um, so let's go into the main. And right after we created the view, now the view is the widget that has the scroll bar, so let's disable its scroll bars. You just do, um, you use one of its member functions called set horizontal scroll bar policy. And then it's an enum called QT, um, I believe it's scroll bar always off, yeah. And then you do the same thing for the vertical scroll bar, just in case you have any um, vertical. Well, we do have vertical objects anyways. 
So both the horizontal and the vertical scroll bars have been disabled. Now let's go test that out. So move around, shoot. So, okay. Okay, so you saw that um, there's no scroll bar, but when we fired that original bullet, um, it still moved our, our big rectangle down. And that's because the default behavior of the scene is to center, or the default behavior of the view is to center um, in the very middle of all the items in the scene. So if you have one item, it will center the view onto that center of the item. If you have two items, the view will be centered in the middle of the two items. If you have three items, the view will be centered in the middle of all three items, and so on. Um, so I don't. I think we can leave that for the next tutorial when we go over um, uh, coordinates and scene recs and stuff like that. For this tutorial, I think this is enough. We have a rectangle that can move around and it can shoot. Um, so once again, thank you for watching. Please give any feedback, and um, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.